Seemingly everyone is playing Animal Crossing New Horizons right now. And so am I. And along the way, I've been admiring some of the neat technical art wizardry on display, such as the lapping waves on the beach, or the dynamic voxel terrain, or the way the ground rolls away behind you, as if deformed around a cylinder. But today, I want to talk about the trees. Now, I love these trees. In particular, I like the way the leaves all flap about individually in the breeze with minds of their own. And while I'm not 100% sure how this is being achieved, I imagine it's something along the lines of a technique I think we can call pivot caching. Pivot caching is, loosely, the technique of storing location and sometimes rotation information for the individual sub-meshes or elements of a mesh. Imagine you have one mesh object made up of many discrete parts that you want to move around on their own. Since you have lots of them, it's not practical or performant to rig and animate. It wouldn't be a good idea to split the mesh into smaller unique parts for the same reason either. So instead, we're going to keep the mesh as one single object and store the pivot points of each mesh part somewhere. For this example, I stored them as vertex colors, but it's also common to use a texture. Once we have this pivot information, we can then use it in a vertex shader to perform transformations relative to the stored pivot, such as scaling, rotating, or even bending parts of the mesh. But first, we need to make the tree. We'll do that in Blender. So make a plane, put a leaf texture on it. Make sure the origin is in a sensible place for rotating the leaf around. Make three spheres and arrange them like ice cream scoops, boolean them together, and then add a particle system modifier. In the Particle System tab, change the type to Hair, and set Render As to Object, and pick your leaf plane. You might need to fix the orientation a little bit. In the Modifier tab, click Convert to make the instances their own objects. Then, scale the ice cream scoops up using Alt-S, and do it all again. Then delete the spheres underneath. You might now want to do a quick pass to remove any clipping or overlapping leaf planes. Fill any gaps, and just make it look good. Also, make a trunk. Just use a cylinder and extrude some roots and you're done. Now, before merging all of these leaves together, we need to store their pivot information. Here's a simple Python script that does just that, so let's read what it does. For each object in my selection, so for each leaf, store the location of the object, then encode that location as a color. For each component of the color, I've just taken the absolute position of the object along the corresponding axis, then divided that by the maximum distance we can expect leaves to be at along that axis. So by 2.1 for X and Y, and by 6 for Z. That scales everything down to the range of negative 1 to positive 1. Then I've rescaled this value again to fit between 0 and 1, with a simple add 1 and divide by 2. This is important because our vertex colors can't be negative values. For the alpha component, I've stored a random float, which we'll use later to give each leaf a random offset in its wobble animation, so they don't all wobble in sync because that would look really weird. The rest of the script is just getting the mesh data from the object, creating a color set, storing the vertex color, and then writing the modified mesh data back to the object. After running the script, we can then safely merge all of our leaves into a single object. But be sure to make a backup of your scene before merging everything together, as it'd be really tricky to try and undo this. Now before looking at the shader, I'd like to quickly cover the idea behind storing these pivots and how that helps us achieve the rotating leaf effect that we're trying to replicate. So the vertices of your mesh are just points in space as an offset from the object origin, which I've represented here as blue vectors. The stored pivot is this red vector, and when we subtract that vector from our vertex positions, we move the entire leaf mesh such that the pivot of the leaf now sits at the origin. From here, we can perform any kind of operation, such as a rotation about a vector, then put the leaf back where it was by simply adding back the vector that was subtracted. The result is that the leaf has been rotated around the stored pivot. Now that we know how it's supposed to work, let's have a look at how it's implemented in the shader. At the top of the shader, I've defined a bunch of quaternion functions which we'll use for doing our vector rotations later. I've taken the code for these from this super helpful Geeks 3D article about quaternion rotations, which you should definitely read. Link is in the description. 
There's not much going on in the fragment function except for this handy fix that flips the normals of back faces. All of the important stuff is happening in the vertex function. The first four lines are simply decoding the pivot that we encoded in Blender. To start with, the normalization between 0 and 1 is undone by multiplying our value by 2 and subtracting 1. This puts us back in the range of negative 1 to positive 1. Then we can just multiply that value by the same value we divided by in Blender to expand everything to the correct scale. Now everything should be in the correct range. Except it's not, because somewhere along the way our vertex colors were encoded as sRGB values, and not linear ones. I'm not sure where that happened, but it's okay, we can fix it. Raising the final decoded values to the power of 0.4545 should linearize the sRGB curve, but it's not a perfect fix. The smart thing to do here would be to jump back into Blender and fix this during encoding, but we've come this far, so let's carry on. Something else to note here is that Godot and Blender have different coordinates systems. Specifically, Godot swaps Blender's Y and Z axes, and the Z axis is also inverted. This is fixed in the shader by assigning the blue vertex color channel to the Y axis, and the green channel to the Z axis, which is then also inverted by multiplying it by negative 1. Next up we get the sign on our built-in time, plus that random alpha value we stored earlier, which will offset each leaf in time so they don't all sway together, multiplied by a wobble speed float. This provides us with an oscillating value between negative one and positive one, with wobble speed controlling the frequency of the oscillations. Multiplying the result by another float, which I've called wobble amount, allows us to control the amount of rotation, so now we can have the leaves spin in circles if we want. Finally, as demonstrated earlier, we performed the rotation by subtracting the pivot from the vertex position, performing a quaternion rotation around a wind vector, then adding the pivot back to create the final vertex position. And for demonstration purposes, I've also left in the ability to scale down the pivot transform just because that's fun to play with. And that's it. The result is a lovely leafy tree with natural looking wobbly leaves. Hopefully this has been a useful demonstration of how pivot caching works, and I also hope that I've provided a good, solid, practical example of its use. Pivot caching is of course good for more than just wobbling leaves around, and storing additional information such as position and a forward vector can make it even more powerful. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did and would like to see more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe as I intend to release more videos just like this one about various other technical art and game development related topics. If you'd like to get your hands on the project files for this video, you can find those over on my Patreon page, linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching.